Now I just saw a spark come up as I started that first pass of the chamfer and it looks like I've hit my screw. So that was fairly lucky. I probably just buggered my chamfer bits, mind you. I've completely forgotten that these pocket hole screws go really far in. Just had a brainwave. Fortunately, I didn't glue these in. So what I'm going to do is back the screws off a couple at a time and then I should be able to safely make this. If they then come out the other side, I'll be able to sand them with an angle grinder, which is designed to do the job. So planning, again, not the strong suit, but at least we can fix this. Camera doesn't do too well on these extreme close-up but you can probably just see there, that's how far after the screws have gone in, they're protruding. So I'll just about to knock those off with a file. The rest of that should clean up in sanding. So remember kids, make sure you do your routing before your assembly. I also think I'm gonna use a chamfer along the outside top. That'll make the lid a little bit easier to come off and on and get rid of this edge. Oh, coming together. I love rowdy, it's great fun. Makes a bit of noise though. Right, so next I've swapped to my five millimeter round over bit and because it's taking away so little wood, it actually goes a lot faster and I'm not hooking up the back to bother with. Any edge effectively that's going to be on the outside that isn't one of these quarters, I'm running over with this just to make them nice and smooth and it looks really nice too. I've already done the top inside lip and it's 100% better. Well, that was an awful lot of routing and then even more sanding, of course. Overall though, that is the frame complete. I really like how it's looking. It's got nice and smooth profiles just about everywhere. Now let's try and glue in some more of these braces and leave them there overnight so we can start building the carcass. Today, children, we're going through the rectangle window. These are my two 31 and a half, actually a tiny bit shorter now. I'm going to cut those down to length. They're gonna sit in here and up here like that. So more glue in and clamping time. Unfortunately, on my cut list for the plans over here, they miscounted. They only listed six of these 15 and a half inch beams, when in fact, if you count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I was too short. Secondly, you'll also notice in this view, there's actually a gap between those two bottom ones because the bottom of the carcass is actually meant to be sandwiched between them. So two things I had to fix. Fortunately, I had a bit of scrap wood of 19 mil and these two long bits I've cut to 15 to make up the extra supports that I'm gonna need. And these two bits, are gonna fix my floor. So you can see the problem here. The bottom runner is lower than the side runner, because what you're meant to do is put this bottom frame in, then put the floor in, and then stick down this bit, whereas I glued these two pieces together. Not a huge disaster though, because I've just managed to cut up a few extra little bits like so, and then I'll get those glued in and they will provide the base for my floor. So a nice little fix there. It's a good thing about woodworking, there's very little that can't actually just be rectified pretty easily and no one's gonna know the difference unless they watch this video. Cool bananas. Time to start cutting out the carcasses, particularly the base piece. I'm using nine millimeter MDF. You can get away with six is what Steve did, but actually I wanted some of the nine mil for another project and it's gonna be a little bit stronger in the long run too. That's what most of a sheet of MDF of nine mil looks like. 
The quickest way I think for me to break this down further, having already cut it in the car park using the rip cut, is to use my little edge guide. This one was already cut pretty close, so I'm just gonna to start to trim it down and fit that bottom piece in. Took some really fine trims, couple of passes with a circular saw to get this first board into shape. But there she goes, fits nicely. That's all I'll do for today. If you haven't noticed, fitting in woodworking is something that I try to do on a nearly daily basis. I get home from work, I've got about an hour or so before the uh, neighbors start complaining about the noise and before the wife shows up. You know, you don't need a lot of time to woodwork. I do this step by step. You'll notice the costume changes quite regularly because I'm often filming just one process. I'll glue in a couple of bits of wood, I'll cut a piece or two to size, and then over time, as long as you're not in a rush, your project gets done. Time to make the four sides of the toy box. This is an entire length of the MDF, which I cut down in the car park. And fortunately, thanks to the good plans, it is almost the exact right height for the box already, and better yet, it's just small enough, I'm gonna be able to use my square cut to make my life nice and easy. And then we're gonna put the short sides in first, I've decided actually, other than the base, because that way the base is gonna help hold them in. These have got the smallest amount of surface area to stick to the sides. So let's get chopping. Left and right side in. Now for the front and the back sides. Cut this one down the length already. Fits in nice, just a little bit too high. So I'm just going to run my mark straight across the back like that. And then I'm going to be able to trim off the top. And we have all four sides done. This is coming together pretty easy. That'll do. One more to go. Time to construct the lid for the box now that the primary construction of the box is pretty much done. Very, very simple construction. These pieces are exactly the same length using my cross cut trick on the circular saw. They're gonna be stuck together. I'm gonna to pocket screw and glue them. Now, interestingly, in this case, I'm actually gonna have the pocket screws on the outside of the pieces. So the ugly bit I want there, line it up in the center. And the reason for that is the way the lid is going to be held onto the box is externally. Once this frame is built, I can square it up and glue it down to a piece of the MDF, I should say. And then I'm going to put thin strips that are only maybe a centimeter longer than these pieces on the outside. They'll cover the pocket screw ugliness and the inside will look all pretty. And then that little lip that's going to fall by the MDF down the bottom there is what's going to hold the lid to the box. That round over looks really nice. And in fact, even this join here, which I was a little bit worried about, is quite pretty. We'll see how it turns out once I have the exterior cladding on. I've got that in clamped up tight. I'm gonna use my square here to force that into 90 degrees as best I can. Hold it there. And then we drive in our pocket screw from the outside. And repeat three times. I was about to put this onto the base piece of MDF in order to finish the lid and then whack on the side bits when I thought, well, maybe I wanna put in some handles by cutting away a little bit there so you'll be able to lift it off. And then I was also thinking at the same time, what color am I gonna paint all of this? And straight away, my brother's a bit of a soccer football fan and I was thinking sky blue for the Sydney Football Club, Sydney FC. And then I had an even better idea. Those handles and this enclosure kind of make it look like a soccer field. And 
if I cut out some scrap pieces of wood, and maybe even a wooden football, coin in progress, I'm going to be able to turn this whole top surface into a game, as well as being a toy box. You know, because we can never over-engineer things, and I've only got two days left to build it, so why not introduce complexity into the design? I'm going to have to get cracking, though, if I want to have this done on time, because I actually really would like to finish a project within the promised time frame. Let's get to work. To make the goals slash handles, I've just put the straight bit in here. Very simply, pushing in against here and running through. Then I'll round over these edges with the 5mm bit too. There you go, here's as you like. Sadly, the lid was too wide just to take a piece off there, so I'm going to have to cut a piece that way and then short it down there. There we go, there's the base of the lid, and even better, this off cut piece, I can now trim down to make the sides as well. I think I'm actually gonna put some nails in for the first time, because while I could just glue this and it'd be perfectly fine, I don't have the patience and it won't take too many. Let's break out a hand tool. Glad I got that big board of MDF cut down a bit. I can see my Bundy flag again. On the wish list for next year, air compressor, and a bread nailer. That would make this sort of stuff much easier and more fun. You might notice I've purposely cut this piece of MDF a little bit proud because once it's all dried and uh, nailed down, I should say, I can just use the flush trim bit on the router to cut it to the perfect size. Success. Okay, okay, so while a nail gun's probably gonna be a lot cooler, this is actually pretty fun. One more side to go, so if I've only managed to stuff two nails up. There you go, so no measuring there, I just spaced them roughly six to seven centimeters, just dividing up the halves until they look fine. The best thing with that is, I can break out the router again straight away, and don't have to wait for the glue to dry. All right, so I've got my flush trim bit for the router. Uh, that's simply gonna let me cut off all of this excess MDF. Bugger, I forgot about something. I lose my runner here and I've gone a bit deep. Uh, it's not a disaster really, I can just make it maintained all the way along. All right, well, I'm gonna to have to watch that on both sides, and we'll keep on going. So there's the finished playing field slash lid for the most part. Those goals slash handles came out really, really well, and it feels nice and solid. Even my little handiwork with the nails came out tops too. I'm gonna to make one more slight change though. I've decided it just looks a bit heavy and a bit chunky. It doesn't really need to be that thick. So I'm not gonna use an eye mill. I had a scrap of 6mm, which is actually what Steve called for in the original plans anyway, and conveniently, it is exactly the right length. So it's going to save me some cuts too. Because I've shown far too much rounding and you generally get the idea, I quickly did the 5mm round over bit over these lovely cut sections. I'm now going to space them the 6mm width of this board off the edge to step the two round overs, the one on the pine and the one on here. Last thing I do today is I'm going out to have Christmas dinner-ish with me mates and the wife. And the main one's on, you can flip it and get some smaller ones too. Oh, that's a little leakage. No, oh, of course it's not leakage. It's where I put glue that I didn't need to put it. Under this track. Side pieces glued on it overnight. Last thing to do is to get my end bits on, line them up, 
and I want to mark out the height that they are going to rest at. So there we go. Now I can do that on both sides and cut out where the handle sash goal needs to be. To cut out the goals, got the inverted jigsaw on, hack those out, and then we use the flush trim router once it's installed to get around the edge. Final glue up to this project, finally getting to use my Christmas present. Oh, those Rockler clamp heads on a 1.2 meter pipe to hold these bits in. They are awesome. Couldn't have done this before. Alright, time for some Christmas shopping to finish it off. This one's nearly done.